Okay. Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am, as always, your host, Jinx, and we are joined by everyone in the community, I'm sure, today for our second uh, talk through with uh, Michael O'Rourke, founder and Grove CEO, regarding the current proposals that are up. Uh, we will. I will uh, remind everyone of the rules. Please, one person talking at a time. Let's avoid personal attacks. And uh, this call will be recorded and distributed to the community later. And on that note, I will hand it over to Michael. Thanks, Jinx. Um, look, I want to spend the first uh, few minutes of this uh, viewing everything uh, or, or stating how I view the state of the world uh, of Pocket Network and everything related to that. Um, and then from there, I'll, I'll leave it to, to any questions that, that you guys or anyone wants to ask from, uh, from Telegram. Um, so feel free to hop in on the voice or uh, just type something in the chat and I'll, I'll be reading through it. Um, so what are the facts as, as I see them today? Um, Grove has uh, uh, about money has 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 money until about October. Um, I've got a commitment on my condo. It's it's going to close next quarter, um, so that's going to happen uh, before the end of August, and uh, we'll have money uh, through the end of of, of January slash February, assuming all things stay the same. Um, we've got a network of I think uh, very talented node operators that have enabled Grove to. Uh, provide what I think is world-class quality of service uh, based on their skills and the technology that we've built at Grove. Uh, we have spent uh, millions of dollars at Grove getting to this uh, uh, tech stack uh, over the last 12 to 18 months. And we wouldn't be here without the team that we have today uh, because I do think this is really critical and really valuable for the future of the network, uh, what Grove has built. Um, uh, our business is growing, but uh, it, is, it has grown incredibly slow, I think or it hasn't grown fast enough, I think, to support uh, many of the uh, uh, of what we believed 12 months ago. Uh, but that said, uh, we were proving that, that at least from a growth perspective, um, that it is possible to, um, uh, to actually depend fully on, an, on, on a decentralized network uh, and have real SLAs that we put our money behind. And I think that truly is a special thing. When we talk about the node runners, we've got uh, 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 incredibly talented node runners, supply side operators who understand every single inch of bare metal, DevOps infrastructure. Um, and that's, I think, helped not just Grove, but I think all the other gateways that are starting to uh, uh, operate on the network. Uh, we've also got, I think, very clear proof that people want to run gateways on the network. Uh, I spoke with a couple of gateway operators uh, over Brussels at Brussels last week, and it's very clear that they are absolutely pining to send more traffic to the network uh, after talking with them. Uh, it's just the fact is that I think the gateway kit needs a little bit more work. Uh, in terms of for them having the security and the trust in that uh, uh, specific piece of, of technology. Uh, but ultimately, um, uh, we've been on the right path, I think, when, when it comes to that perspective. And um, I do believe that the biggest bottleneck for, um, uh, for Pocket is Shannon, uh, because I do think that when we hit permissionless gateways, um, I think it just opens up a wealth of opportunity for just so many different types of people and so many different types of businesses. Um, going from there, uh, when we talk about uh, what I believe the economics are, right? Um, this is this is stated pretty clear in in um, in the proposal. Uh, but ultimately, I've I've followed through or checked in with uh, multiple folks who I think are very smart about the strategy. You know, uh, uh, this sort of approach relative to their knowledge of pocket and understanding uh, why I think this is important. Um, generally, I think devils are in the detail. Devils always in the details, but the general approach of uh, being able to uh, uh, switch economic knobs and, and increase inflation uh, or emissions for new chains, whatever that might be, um, uh, I think is the right approach, uh, particularly for people who I think either existing investors or, or outsiders who uh, have a clear context of, of where things are at. Um, when I think about uh, uh, myself leading the foundation and Grove, um, I think this is really important. Um, I think it's really important to have everything aligned uh, with one single vision. And ultimately, I'm here to answer your questions uh, uh, when it comes to, to your questions that you have of me. Uh, an update on the proposal, I am uh, working on it. I'm actually revamping quite a bit of it, um, uh, particularly after Brussels, and I think some of the feedback from the community. I hope to have something new by Friday, but, uh, but no guarantees on that. And, um, uh, uh, and that includes um, the kind of uh, uh, oversight that I think um, uh, some po folks have, have been asking for. Uh, for me, the most important thing when it uh, when it comes to me leading the foundation 
are frankly just being able to pay the protocol team, being able to um, uh, adjust the parameters quickly as needed uh, based on feedback from either the node running community, gateways, or or, or the broader ecosystem. Um, and ultimately, um, not just change the parameters, but um, uh, implement a plan, which I will uh, post alongside the proposal as well, in terms of, hey, it's not just, you know, increase the incentives and, and have at it. Um, I have a very concrete plan uh, uh, when it comes to um, actually driving uh, real adoption of the network. I think we can take what happened in 2021 and 2022 as a very um, clear example of what's possible, uh, albeit I think in a, in a more sustainable way. Uh, but at a high level, my plan, and I think I saw Shane uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, convey some of this in, in the Telegram, in, in the den, uh, but ultimately spending uh, uh, the first two to three months of my time as a foundation director, uh, really traveling around the world um, to, I think, the biggest tech slash blockchain hubs in Latam, in Africa, and in Asia. Um, we have a special opportunity here uh, with the increasing incentives and with the, abil uh, the ability for us to support AI and with the launching of Shannon. Uh, to, I think, create a ton of opportunity for a ton of different types of people. Um, uh, there is software there that we could use to uh, make it very easy for people to operate nodes without actually operating themselves, uh, meaning operating a business of running nodes, uh, similar to what previous uh, uh, node operators were doing for, for some time. Um, uh, and, and, and going around the world, having two meetups, uh, the first meetup uh, with a partner company that can really get the exposure out and the awareness out, I'm expecting to get anywhere between 50 and 100 people at most of these meetups. Um, and uh, in presenting these meetups, I lay out the vision, the direction, where we're going, um, what's been done, uh, what's really special about Pocket, um, and, and leading into a second really important meetup uh, the next day, which is effectively a node running and a gateway uh, uh, workshop. Um, I would expect somewhere between 10 and 20 people to show up to these different meet to the second meetup. Uh, but really critically, um, uh, these, I believe, are the people that uh, see the opportunity and 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 want to see what's more uh, with, with what's possible with Pocket. Um, through these meetups um, or through these workshops, uh, I want to show people how to run nodes or how to use software to run nodes or run gateways on top of the network. Um, uh, because I do think one thing that has been missing or we've you know, mostly ignored since we founded this protocol is 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 really other parts of the world outside of the west i think we have some pockets for example in korea uh and some other places in the world but we've never actually made the effort to make one-to-one -one connections uh, uh in communities around the world part of this plan also entails uh having localized community chats whether that be whatsapp you know wechat kakao talk line you know telegram you name it um and really critically having um uh, the distribution channels for um uh, 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 for any announcements. Um, so what I mean distribution channels are, are media platforms uh, that are localized, right? There's plenty of things in French and in, in Korean and Japanese and in, in, in Mandarin, you name it, uh, in Spanish, um, you name your language. Um, I want to make sure that we have those relationships and we have that initial uh, uh, foundational community around the world uh, and leading into uh, improving the gateway kit, uh, leading into AI, uh, leading into the launch of Shannon, uh, really yelling about our growth um, and the important things that are happening from a, from a protocol and an individual company perspective, uh, no matter what company it is. Um, I believe that from first principles that this really um, uh, will lay the foundation for us to be to actually have true global distribution. Um, in many ways, I felt like we've been kind of yelling into the wind on uh, west, and we've ultimately ignored, I think, um, uh, much of the world, which... Uh, if you believe like I do that this has the uh, has yet uh, has yet we have the opportunity to really build something global here. Um, I think it's just critically important, and you know, just looking at any other protocol that has spent the time to do this, um, uh, whether that be near Ethereum, Solana, uh, Bitcoin, you know, you name it. Uh, everyone has done through this has gone through this level of hard work, uh, which takes time and, and doesn't happen overnight. Um, and really, my goal around this is is really creating um, economic opportunity for people. Uh, uh, which is what I think I've been good at, uh, either through the company, um, individuals, or, or the network itself. Uh, uh, and yeah, with that, um, I, I just really, really believe that um, uh, we have an incredible opportunity here. Um, I think we've got capital uh, lined up for the foundation, assuming that um, uh, uh, this passes. Um, so when it comes to paying the things that we need to pay, um, uh, uh, whether that be the protocol team or any other initiatives, 
um, I plan to uh, make sure we make that happen. So um, that's really where my head is at. Um, I haven't seen any questions yet. So I see one person typing. So I don't know if you want to unmute um, or, um, or just type something. I'm happy to answer whatever it might be. Sorry. No, no, no. Okay. Um, it's been really good. Yeah. Tracy, you're, you're muted. You're unmuted, uh, Tracy. Yeah. Sorry. I just see several people typing here, so I'm just waiting for that unless someone wants to pop in via yeah, voice. It's asking, I want to ask a question. It's a very simple question. As a developer, when we're speaking, it's really hard to hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you sound far away. Okay. While you focus, uh, while you uh, uh, figure that out, um, I got a couple of questions here from the chat. Mike, what is your opinion on the efforts uh, on multi-chain web pocket and the DeFi initiative? What priority would those two work streams give them for the remainder of the year? Um, I'd have to look at everything, but my opinion right now is I'm not convinced that uh, spreading out further liquidity is the right decision. I'm happy to be convinced otherwise. Um, uh, uh, as long as it's easy for people to access it and use it, I think that's the most important thing. And just from the experience that we had from the original Telegram OTC channels, to all of a sudden splitting up liquidity in um, four to five exchanges in about a month. Uh, that was actually, I believe, that negative for us. Um, that said, um, uh, I think there are plenty of counter reasons as to why that might be a smart thing to do in terms of adding different things uh, or different opportunities for people on different protocols. Uh, but again, um, that's I've, I don't have a strong opinion on it. I'm more, I'm more in the middle, personally. Cryptocorn, um, it sounds like you're going to spend a lot of time doing DevRel, which we need and I think you'd be really good at. However, a single prenup director is going to have at least a full time job, if not more, needing, if not more leading, needing to do operations. What are your thoughts on that? Will you hire more ops people? Yes, absolutely. Um, as a part of the proposal, uh, I'm including uh, the ability for people to add two more, for the DAO to be able to add two more directors um, and also uh, uh, unpause the DAO or not have the DAO pause in the first place. And I'm still working on, on the details of the proposal, but hopefully I have it out by, by, by Friday. Um, but yes, of course, I, this just this can't happen alone. Um, that's just not possible. Tart, oh, is someone going to say something? Is it sloppy, sloppy Joe? Or is it just excellent in you? Oh, Mike, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. This is a very simple question. I mean, there were a lot of stories about forking, et cetera, right? I mean, as a developer, you as a developer, I mean, I also have experience forking, but forking is the easiest way to make a new coin, right? But instead of doing that, you came and proposed this proposal, which you know that this is the hard part. Why did you choose to do this? Because it was the right thing to do. Um, it just never would have sat well with me to be able to actually to, to fork the network and say, you know, fuck all the pocket holders. Um, and, and ultimately, I do believe in the network. 
I do believe that everything that we've built, you know, uh, despite uh, all of the differing opinions, which I think are all valid. So um, ultimately, it's really just uh, what feels like a moral obligation and doing the right thing to actually go through the process as we designed it. Got a question from Taraba. Um, Grove is spending 350K a month, only 70K is a for Shannon development. Do you consider cutting unnecessary people from Grove and focus more delivering on, and focus more on delivering Shannon? Look, we've considered everything at every time. It's really just a matter of um, uh, uh, understanding where the business is and what our needs are from a growth perspective. Um, but yes, we've been, we went through pretty massive layoffs last year. So that's obviously something that we've always considered in any situation. Zoolander. Does your proposal relate to Cur Grove's current limited runway? Why are you discussing funds for the protocol team now? Why are, uh, does your proposal relate to Grove's current limited runway? Uh, no, this comes, as I say in the, in the, in the proposal, it comes from uh, what I believe is needing a change on the economics. Um, I think single leadership um, and being able to uh, uh, steer the ship from, from just one perspective at this point. Um, uh, Grove's uh, uh, runway is, is, in my opinion, something separate. While that said, I think the fundraise process that we're going through um, definitely impacted my opinion on, on, on what direction to go with this. You mentioned talking to node, operator, node operators. Did you also consult with other gateway operators? Yes, I did. And I also, the ones that I didn't, I, I spoke with uh, uh, in Brussels last week. What are the compensation package numbers based on? Um, my view is uh, a percentage of, of the network. Um, and you know, assuming we get to that value, uh, it was uh, based on uh, whatever the value is at whichever price, um, having a percentage ownership of, of the network based on those prices. How has the DAO hindered speedy decision-making in the past, particularly for decisions we want to make? Um, I think the original uh, inflation reduction proposals, I think is a good example. Uh, I think that took three to four months to finally conclude. Um, uh, generally, I don't think every decision needs to be fast, particularly when it comes to protocol upgrades and specific changes to the actual client itself. Um, and to be clear, like I think there is some level of um, need for slowing things down when this protocol is valuable, right? Um, I'm not advocating to really remove the DAO or anything like that. Um, I think it's actually really important, but Let's get it up to a value that I think is worth, worth managing at that point. Cryptocorn, how much time, work time money can you ballpark is needed to get the gateway work where the people looking to spin up gateways you recently spoke to need? Um, I think it can be done in, in a quarter, personally, uh, but um, uh, that's my opinion. Um, I think it requires uh, uh, real architecting and real looking at, uh, from engineering team. Zoolander, you spoke to gateway operators in Brussels, but had the first version of the proposal published before that. Yes, I had reached out to them previously. They were either out of office or, or not able to meet before them. So um, we all caught up uh, in Brussels regardless. And um, I assured them that if I get elected uh, as a director, nothing would change uh, from their perspective. Skitty, you mentioned having uh, additional directors in the modified proposal. Um, I don't. I'm still working through that. Um, I think having folks that are uh, not a voter uh, but invested in pocket, I think, is, is, is an interesting avenue for the one or both. Um, but um, I generally think that um, uh, separating uh, voters from, from, from at least the, the foundation directors might be a prudent approach. But um, I'm open to who that should be anyway. Person typing. 
it's wants to pop in and, and ask something via voice. Roberto has a follow up on the me speaking to node to gateway operators in Brussels. Um, which gateway operators did you speak with in Brussels? Is this thing or new? Uh, I spoke with uh, Liquify and Chainstack in Brussels, and uh, their concerns were like, you know, is anything going to change uh, from the contracts that they signed? My intention is to uh, not just uh, not change anything, but to support them uh, as much as I possibly can. That was the main concern. Liquify and Chainstack. Uh, they're asking which ones that I speak with. I, I mentioned that in the previous answer. Is uh, BT around? I was under the impression that he had um, a bunch of questions as well. We got one person typing here. Michael, why is Shannon upgrade being pushed to Q2 2025? Um, I said this in the in the den, um, but we're on track for full feature complete for Shannon by November. Uh, the only holdup or the only thing stopping us from launching the network from there will be the actual operational overhead of the transition, the migration, whether that be the main network or wrap pocket or any of the other um, uh, potential uh, versions of wrap pocket out there, right? Um, uh, we have a completely different cryptographic signing scheme that requires thinking through to do properly. Um, and there's just a, a bunch of little details that need to make, uh, where, where we need to make sure that it's done uh, smoothly and, and correctly. So, um, like I said, uh, we expect to have feature complete or feature parity with Shannon by November. And from there, um, it's planning. And even before then, it's about planning what the launch looks like and how do we, how do we migrate everything over.
got a couple more people typing here. Zoolander, your proposal lacks details on strategy, tokenomics, how much capital will be needed to achieve certain goals, marketing, etc. It seems like random numbers. Can you explain how you arrived at the 20% inflation rate and others? It's really hard to say, uh, and this is just me being completely honest, it's really hard to say what the right inflation rate is. Um, I don't think it should be five. I don't think it should be 100. I would rather opt for something more conservative and increase it from there if that's what feels like we, what, what we need to do if we're not seeing an impact. Um, and that's just uh, uh, the nature of something with so many jobs that you can uh, change within the network like pocket and so many other variables that you just can't control, right? Uh, we don't know what the price will be. We don't know what the traffic will be. Um, and these things are important to really um, uh, have live and, and in action. Um, so ultimately, um, uh, uh, I think it's important to have some level of increase, uh, as I say, through uh, primarily through the new chains or the growth of relays. Um, and 20% uh, felt like a good conservative number to start off with. Um, wouldn't introduce inflation risk or anything like that to the protocol for some period of time. Keep in mind that it's over time that you would hit the 20% number before resetting it. Um, so we'll have probably weeks and months to evaluate and see what's going on um, and make the right decisions from there. Michael, I might have missed it, but since the modified proposal was invalid, when, it, when is a new proposal supposed to be published for feedback? I'm, I'm looking to publish this on uh, by Friday. No guarantees, but really pushing to have this published by Friday. Alongside a, um, a concrete um, kind of plan of execution from at least uh, my perspective. So, Linda, I think the, the strategy uh, in terms of how uh, it's laid out from a philosophical perspective is pretty clear in terms of how I would think about adjusting any economic um, parameters within the protocol. Um, I spoke about earlier uh, in a previous answer a, a more concrete, let's call it marketing strategy and adoption strategy in the, from a broader sense. Um, I didn't want to inundate the proposal with everything despite me thinking about it and having things written down, uh, be the post uh, something more concrete when it comes to what I would execute on, uh, not having full visibility uh, into the foundation today. Am I clear for everyone else or is it just Zoolander? Or am I breaking up for everyone else? Anyone? You sound clear to me. Okay. Okay, thanks everyone. Sounds like it's you, uh, Zoolander. Um, but when I, I'll just repeat the, repeat the answer. Um, when I talk about the strategy, I think the philosophic uh, An economic strategy is pretty clearly lined out uh, in the proposal. That's not changing. Um, ultimately, there's just so many uh, variables that can change that it's, it's, it's hard to say, I'm going to do this on this date, I'm going to do X on this date, I'm going to do Y on that date, right? Um, when it comes to my plan of execution outside of uh, the economic stuff, um, I've got that written down and my plan is to write down, or, or my plan is to post this strategy um, uh, next to the proposal. Uh, the revised proposal, hopefully by, by Friday. Um, this includes the marketing slash adoption strategy that I outlined. It includes continuing uh, any gateway efforts. It also includes um, a repositioning of the network and some things that I did highlight in the proposal, but in more detail. Tony, it seems like people are concerned that when you have full control over Dow Treasury, you'll spend them all. Is there any plan to lock this up, spend partial? We have full transparency on the Dow Treasury, where it will be kept, et cetera. Um, look, a part of this revised proposal is to have uh, uh, two people um, uh, in addition to the to the foundation, uh, not just myself. 
Um, and I think that, uh, I think, I think is enough oversight, uh, particularly with me still leading growth uh, when it comes to having uh, an external opinion. And I think just generally property, uh, proper security practices, um, which I'm sure the foundation already has, will be, will be continued. Next question is, uh, when received token as per section two to five of the achievement, uh, people will be afraid that this will be on the market immediately. Any plan on this? Uh, I've already outlined in the proposal that um, uh, uh, that I'm putting a four-year vest with one-year cliffs on these milestone payments. Um, ultimately, like if, if this doesn't, you know, I'm doing this because I care about the network, not about the money. Uh, I do believe that um, if we do succeed with this, um, yeah, I deserve some portion of it. But um, ultimately, you know, that vesting should hopefully prove that um, I'm not really doing this for the for, for the money just to dump on on the network when those milestones are hit. Michael, if there's if, if there is there a possibility of lowering the tokens number, I think the numbers are high. I mean, if you uh, post on the forum the proposal, um, I think it justified reason. I've I've looked at everything, so um, I would just uh, ask you to post on the report on the proposal with um, a solution um, or some reasoning or context behind it. Mike, I'm a, a bit confused uh, by the difference between feature complete in November and launch in Q2. Um, maybe I'm the only one, but let me let me try and nail this down. On what at what point will someone be able to stake apps? basically permit to do a permissionless gateway uh at current rate i would say anywhere between december and end of q1 uh, right now so I'm, I'm not sure where the where the q2 number came from um it just depends on uh, how the migration goes uh, what are the complexities of the migration so when we say feature complete uh it'll be fully tested by that point and it'll be full focus on the migration um, again, that migration could take a month. It could take two months. It could take three months. Is that clear? Yeah, I get. I get it now. And it's 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 not just a technical thing. It's an operational. Um, it's an operational thing. Tony, would a token holder have to go through a swap to change from Morse Pact to Shannon Pact, or will this be automatic? Um, that's a good question. Those details haven't been uh, defined yet. I can say at a high level, given the different cryptographic signing scheme that Shannon has relative to Morse, um, at the very least, we'll have folks on Morse uh, sign a message to be able to receive the same amount of tokens um, uh, with their address, right? Um, uh, again, those details haven't been, we're just in, really in early preliminary stages of planning what that migration looks like, but obviously the goal will be to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to, to claim their tokens um, uh, with, the, with the new snapshot. And yes, when do you think exchanges would start to migrate to Shannon? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't have visibility into that. Uh, I would hope that some of the efforts that I would employ uh, when it comes to uh, global community building uh, will help that. Uh, but ultimately, 
Um, I'm not involved in those conversations right now, and I'm not sure where they're at. Um, uh, so you know, each exchange has their own different criteria for listening and expectations. And if you're asking about existing exchanges, um, uh, I would assume we need to contact all these exchanges, you know, several months before, um, and maybe part of the migration plan as well uh, when it comes to um, 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 feature complete in November. Um, exchanges are a really critical piece of this, and we certainly have to have some, and, you know, it may take uh, some two weeks, it may take others three months, right? So that's a question that we'll have an answer for as we get closer to, to feature complete. When should I should clarify? When should the current exchanges? Okay, yeah, I think I, I think I got that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's on an exchange by exchange basis would be my assumption. I see Tony typing. I was under the impression that uh, we have a lot more questions here. Um, I'm happy to ask answer anything about the substance of the proposal as well. Uh, if you guys want any clarifications on, on that, but. Last question from Tony. I was wondering, considering you guys are partnered with Impura and all good companies, any ongoing inference related partnerships and talks? Um, yeah, yeah, we've got several folks lined up for infrastructure uh, when it comes to um, AI inference specifically. I think it's just an order of operations. Uh, announce those early conversations uh, right here, right now. CBT typing here. Michael, you mentioned that we allow two more directors in the foundation for oversight. Can that number be increased to five, or how did we settle for two? Um, I think at the size of the rat, uh, three is a fine number. Uh, 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 having five there 
uh, would would overcomplicate things when it comes to decision making. Tony says, wouldn't that mean an increase in salaries? Um, I would hope not. Uh, I would hope these would be primarily unpaid uh, uh, directors or minimally paid directors, uh, primarily acting as a, uh, in effect, a board um, uh, 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 to be able to uh, act as a, as a backstop for uh, any decisions that you guys think that uh, might be bad at the end of the day. Michael, uh, I mean, just more people means more complications. Um, just generally, you know, three versus five. Um, it's just a general, general rule of thumb, uh, in my opinion. Shane, what is the difference between the PNF structure with three directors to this new vision of three directors? Um, I don't think there's much of a difference. Uh, I think the most important thing is to preserve capital. Um, and if that means having uh, folks that can act as um, a literal board, uh, to say yes or no to decisions uh, with relative, um, with relatively uh, uh, little involvement, um, I think that would help save uh, uh, the foundation. Et struggling to come off mute. Mike, you've spoken to many investors who seem to be running the show, and whom you claim to have backing from. Are these investors pocket holders or Grove equity holders? Look, I think we're in, a, I think, one of the most unique positions as a protocol. None of our largest investors, who are the largest token holders, actually have a vote in the network. Uh, ultimately, going through this process um, uh, 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 is through the network and the voters, right? Um, so just because they support me doesn't mean the community will support me uh, with this, which is why it's you know, taking all the feedback and, and, and amending the proposal as, as needed. Are these investors pocked holders or Grove equity holders? Uh, most people who I've spoken with are only pocked token holders. Uh, we only have five or six uh, uh, equity holders, and all but one um, are, are, are pocket holders. Reports from Brussels is that Grove coin, I've said this multiple times, uh, the Grove coin is not a solution. We're not working on it. Can you repeat that last part, Michael? You broke up. Yeah. Uh, uh, reports from Brussels is that is that growth coin is still an option. Um, no, I'm not sure who you spoke with, but um, uh, we are not forking pocket into into growth coin. What assurances are there that the Dow Treasury funds won't be used to fund growth? Um, like I said previously, um, I expect to have multiple directors outside of just myself. Um, in addition, I've also stated that all I would like to do is fully pay the protocol team from growth and not fund the rest of growth. Now, I would hope with uh, if uh, with. With, uh, with Shane uh, and anyone else who's a director, um, we've got enough oversight there regardless. Will these directors be down nominated? Uh, I believe they should, yes.
in the previous call, I, uh, uh, I feel like I didn't hear a direct answer. What did you mean by leadership differences? What are the examples? Um, I'd rather not get into that. Uh, this is, I said that the same in the last call. Um, just the fact is that I think there was just disagreements uh, at a fundamental level of the work we were doing and the work the foundation was doing. And um, I'll leave it at that. Like I said before, um, I don't think there was anything malicious involved. Um, I think it was just a straightforward disagreement. Um, and um, and yeah, that's really that's really the, the crux of it. Alberto, what fundamentally on leadership differences? Um, like I said, I think it's a perspective uh, that I have of my team in Grove and and a perspective of the foundation of Grove as well. Um, like I said, uh, I really don't want to get into it because, frankly, I think they've done everything with uh, the best effort possible and have done uh, uh, many amazing things as well. And have, I think I think I've done everything with the highest integrity possible as well. Michael, could you please uh, elaborate on the proposal development under PNF with you as steward? Um, look, I'm pretty hands off with the proposal or with the protocol team that's uh, led with uh, led purely by by Alshansky. Um, and that would continue as is. Taraba, directors that are being used as oversight should be volunteers. There are many candidates willing to do it for free. I think that's a fine. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, point there, to be honest. Um, so I'm open to any suggestions when it comes to that. Who's currently in charge of protocol team oversight because the numerous delays are unacceptable. Uh, Olshansky is in charge of the protocol team. Um, he has led this team now for, I want to say, a year and a half or so, um, and maybe two years at this point. And uh, yeah, I think, like I said, we're on track for November feature complete and a uh, uh, hopefully Q4 slash early Q3, Q1 uh, launch for Shannon. Protocol team oversight, not head of protocol. I'm not sure what you are referring to here. Um, the head of protocol, Olshansky, leads the team. Um, when it comes to oversight, you know, you could say that's me. I speak with Olshansky on a daily basis and, and seeing how things are going. Uh, the most important thing for us is to make sure that we ship it. Yeah, I, I will add some clarity to this. So PNF has been involved with uh, providing, I guess, oversight. Uh, originally, last year, uh, that, that started with uh, bringing Mateo on. And then in February, it started with my joining. So I joined in February, and I worked directly with the protocol team. And I guess you could say I, I, I provide a general oversight, which, uh, which includes um, uh, also providing a lot of different updates and builder calls uh you know so so people are aware of what's going on i also you know meet met directly with uh the directors uh and then also uh you know met with the uh, what's involved in all the protocol team uh meetings and decisions and things of that nature so in terms of like oversight uh that's where i've been playing a role for the past uh since since february um, oversight doesn't necessarily mean control, right? Uh, control is, is uh, you know, under, under Grove, under Oshansky. That's where the uh, more direct control is. So I'm not sure exactly if you mean by oversight, like in, involved and uh, like participating and being aware and tracking everything, or if you mean oversight as in like controlling. Um, so anyways that's that's at least been what has been the grove and pnf kind of dynamic where there's been someone on the pro on the on the uh pnf side part of the uh grove uh protocol team uh and and helping and, and building alongside them um but you know not under grove itself yeah thanks for that shane and i would just add um everything that the team has done has been built in public uh, through the GitHub repos and 
through our own communication as well um, and completely open source. So uh, yeah, when it comes to oversight, people seeing what's going on, uh, that's all been uh, free and public for anyone to see. So the uh, regarding the uh, protocol team uh, development oversight, uh, it's 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 so it's hard to say exactly uh, where there was where there was a lack of proper oversight. Uh, so last year when they shifted from being a you know essentially a new l1 to becoming a cosmos uh sdk l1 um mateo was a part of pnf at the time and was a part of a lot of those discussions um and then in turn and so when that happened uh when that shift happened new timelines came because originally the timeline was q3 uh you know or q4 uh 2023 right and then right after the summer uh it was decided to shift to the cosmos sdk and uh so new timelines were given and then when i joined in february uh i actually wasn't directly aware of specific timelines for like mainnet apparently in the docs um you know it said that uh there was a a date given in june or july I actually didn't fully know that that it was publicly out there until uh, until I think it was after it was in May, and then uh, I started meeting with uh, in my meetings with the directors. There was a lot of questions about timelines. So then that's when I started really diving into timelines. We really started to try to map things out. Um, so there was definitely a lot of pressure uh, on PNF side to lock down timelines and to hold timelines um and so in terms of there being a lack of pressure for timelines i don't think anyone would say there was a lack of pressure for timelines i know i was feeling it i know shansky was feeling it so there was a lot of pressure to have timelines um and so that could be seen as you know people can de de decide how they want to see that if, if that's a good thing or bad thing to, to be put on the you know pressure on the protocol team like that but uh it was there so that's at least what uh in in uh may slash june that's when things really started to come out about timelines and nailing down timelines and uh we originally uh kind of after that initial talk it was later this year um around uh around october like september october was the initial and then uh we kind of landed on november and like right now they're saying November uh, is feature complete. And then, you know, the migration will take time afterwards, which yeah, you know, migration uh, will take time and, and needs to be scoped out. But um, so anyways, I hope that just at least gives context on, you know, at least my own position, my own perspective of being involved and when certain things really uh, started to come up. So in the past few months, there's there was a lot of pressure from the, directors to really lock down timelines. Um, and, you know, part of this is also because like Binance was aware of, uh, we are launching a test net for Shannon and they were wanting to actually like, you know, see that progress. Um, so uh, yeah, there was a lot of reasons to want to lock down timelines. So on PNF side, it was definitely a high motivation. Yeah, and I gave, yeah, I, gave and, a, and I, will, I will say one more thing. Uh, I, I did kind of the the talk of like the last I had known uh, or been told the timeline was November. Um, and then uh, it was updated to feature complete November, but then the migration and everything Q1 and Q2 of uh, well, specifically it said Q1 and then uh, possibly into Q2 of 2025. I I kind of learned about that at the same time as everyone else. Um, that was also during ETH uh, ETH CC and stuff. So I don't know what it, you know how that played into all of it. But um, yeah, the original timeline that I was aware of uh, before it was announced for kind of Q1 was uh, yeah, basically November. Yeah, and I gave uh, a full accounting I think last week 
um, of what led to everything um, to, to where we are today from as far back as I think 2022. Um, I'm happy to, to repost that. So, yeah, and uh, uh, mentioning that the communication gap was huge. Uh, I, I don't, yeah, there, there is a, there has always been a communication gap between the protocol team and uh, uh, PNF. So there, there's, it's, it's always been a, a, a challenge, which is why they brought me in. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I was able to contribute a lot in that area. Um, but uh, timelines was one of those things where, you know, PNF just doesn't control timelines. Um, they're, they're not the protocol team. So uh, it, that's where it's, it's a different dynamic than probably most projects. And so it, it 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 does create differences in how things are executed, how things are communicated, uh, and ultimately how things operate. I just wanna wanna just correct something there, Shane. Um, Olshansky has had weeklies or biweeklies uh, with the foundation for a very long time. I don't know exactly how long, but I don't think uh, saying that there's always been a communication 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 gap between Grove and the foundation is is a fair characterization. Um, but just a, a point there, uh, maybe communication to the protocol team. Um, I'm sorry, to the broader community. Although I'd say like back when Jess was here, uh, she was actively communicating. Um, we had, you know, probably a gap there, uh, as we had some turnover and, um, I believe Mateo, uh, um, also, um, I had a part, had a part in that as well. Rob, are Grove investors willing to help with pocket listing and Coinbase? They have all the connections. Um, yeah, I mean, people are willing to help. And uh, uh, I would assume that we would be able to get as much help, but I would just say that I think finance is pretty uh, much of a black box, uh, at least in my experience in talking with them. I don't know how things have changed in the last 12 to 24 months. I would just say, um, to your point, Dermot, um, this stuff is really hard. You can't just copy paste Cosmos SDK. Um, there are always unknown unknowns when you're doing a full rewrite on something completely novel. Um, and I would say anyone that's built software understands that, particularly something that's on the bleeding edge of technology and tooling that is today. And I think that's just the risk we take with uh, building in the space that we build. It'd be much easier to have timelines if we're working on you know, Postgres or SQL or something like that, right? Uh, but just the fact is, uh, things change really fast in this space, and we want to make sure that we're making the right decisions from those principles. We've always tried to do that. So, Tara, I apologize if you've already addressed this. Who will be running the day to day needs of PNF uh, if PIP 38 passes? Marketing, management of pay streams, will PNF doing hiring puts? Um, I would be leading it. Uh, I probably wouldn't be doing that day-to-day -day stuff, but obviously bringing on folks to help with the operational burden is, is incredibly important. So like I said before, I wouldn't be doing this alone. Do I accept responsibility for protocol delays, Mike? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, we could have made this decision to ultimately end up on Cosmos uh, or make the decision to uh, uh, shift from building our own blockchain to um, uh, uh, from November, maybe six, nine months earlier. Uh, in fact, Alshansky and I talked about it in around Halloween of, of what was it, 2022. Uh, but the fact is that there was still not reasonable tech out at the same time. And it was something that we questioned ourselves constantly. In hindsight, we definitely could have uh, swapped faster, um, but it's hard to switch to something when everything but Cosmos uh, at the time was actually reliable, given our previous experience with working on the Cosmos SDK. 
I'm glad to hear or glad to see that uh, the Cosmos ecosystem is really improved. Um, uh, I, but um, uh, it was really improved, uh, and that's why we're really happy and excited to be working on the Cosmos SDK. But ultimately, you know, the entire uh, uh, aspect of Pocket uh, of Shannon is an entire rewrite. Uh, the nice part is is that we don't have to worry about the uh, consensus, the persistence, um, or the networking layers, because uh, Cosmos takes care of that. Um, and it really allows us to build the best version of Pocket we possibly can. Sure, but I, ex I expect, do I respect, uh, do I accept responsibility for lack of growth of relays? I was not optimizing for relays. Um, I was optimizing for paid traffic. Um, so uh, that wasn't uh, my goal uh, in terms of what I've let grow in the last you know, 12 to, to 18 months. We went from basically full free traffic to 96% paid traffic, um, which I think, uh, uh, given the work that the team has done, is an incredible feat. Um, if we were optimizing for just traffic, uh, we would have kept everything free at the end of the day. So, Rabba, uh, will pocket performance-based payouts be used entirely for your own benefit as a reward, or is part of it planned to be used to help improve pocket further, paid marketing, exchange listings, et cetera? Uh, my intention for the uh, performance-based payouts are to reward myself and those who have helped uh, in that process. At the end of the day, I'm not intending to take all of it. Um, I'm expecting to have oversight in how that gets distributed, but it's ultimately, um, no, I'm not expecting to take all of that. Mike, why are we in a position now after the money raised and token sales where protocol development is underfunded? Where has all the money gone? How can we how can we be sure the Dow Treasury will be managed properly under your stewardship? Please do not respond with "I've learned with mistake from my mistakes." Need something more concrete. All right, so we uh, we went from having raised two million dollars over the course of two and a half years uh, to raising about eighteen, nineteen million dollars in the course of about nine months. Um, we came in with a huge vision. Um, this was around. Uh, Infracon in the DR um, and hired a ton of people. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, uh, that 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 time has come. Uh, that that money has gone to building out the team, uh, completely rebuilding the initial set of infrastructure that we built, uh, particularly over the last eighteen months. Uh, and when you ask where that money has gone, it's gone literally to having world class quality of service, where we've got ninety six percent paying customers and um, you know other RPC providers using us as a backdrop for their own service. Um, uh, the entire time we were paying the protocol team, um, and and ultimately we had to be able to to, to do that uh, uh, first and foremost. And I can also can also say that the protocol team was always the first thing to get paid. Um, Olshansky uh, has never needed a huge team. Uh, you just need really quality people uh, that do great work, uh, which is what we have today. Um, and we did have some level of turnover. Um, one of the pieces here is. Um, Pocket is has got a massive learning curve for people and uh, for anyone. I mean, it, it, even if you're an experienced Web3 engineer, uh, it's still going to take you three to six months to really understand everything and move quickly. Um, and the fact is, like, yes, I've learned from it. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I obviously have learned from it. Um, I do believe that uh, you can make a thousand mistakes as long as you make one right decision. Um, and, you know, that's really what's led us to where we are today. Um, and I don't think we'd be here without the work uh, that the team has done uh, on the protocol side uh, with the decisions that um, uh, uh, Olshansky made last year, as well as the work that the core, uh, the, that the rest of the growth team has, has done as well. So um, not sure what else to tell you. Um, if uh, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to, to, to put yourself in, in a similar position and see what you do, but, um, you know, doing, uh, I've always done the best that I can here. So. Follow up from Zaytar. Will someone be hired to head marketing since your need to focus on tokenomics and the protocol will necessitate full time engagement? And also, given that marketing is not where your expertise lies, yes, of course, absolutely. Um, we would definitely be hiring a full time head of marketing from the foundation.
BT, did you agree to additional directors and a functioning hour? I think I missed that. Yeah, I'm up. To, I'm I'm submitting a, an updated proposal, uh, aiming for Friday, um, but no no promises on that. But really pushing to have it Friday, um, with I think some uh, changes that uh, folks would be amenable to see. Rabba, head of marketing is useless. If that person has no connections or budget, another ad scenario would be a disaster, both in terms of performance and in terms of treasury sustainability. Um, I have capital lined up to be able to sell uh, in terms of POCT uh, if uh, uh, this, this goes through. Um, so we'll have, I think, enough of a budget to, to make things happen. But I am taking this from, you know, my lessons learned over the last two years, especially. Um, I want to do this the right way and with as little burn as possible. I just want to say I think Ads did a did a marvelous job um, with uh, with everything that she was tasked to do. BT, when can we expect a budget, including line items for your vision? Um, it's hard to say unless I see the budget and everything that uh, uh, all the work streams. To be completely honest, but um, I can outline high level what I think should happen. I said earlier that I'd be posting uh, a, a deeper execution plan uh, next to the proposal uh, that will highlight some of the stuff, BT. Like I said, I'm trying to get both out with the proposal by Friday, BT. Again, I apologize if you've already addressed this, but are you open to considering a different compensation package scheme for reaching pocket token price, app, uh, price targets? Uh, yes, I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen one uh, alternative um, suggestion outside of people saying, I think it's too high. Um, again, I've taken all of everyone's comments uh, into consideration here. So. Will you publicly reveal all addresses, holding stables, and other assets to community contract spending transparently, both PNF and Grove holdings? Um, I could definitely commit that to PNF. Um, uh, you, know, you guys know what Grove's runway is, how much money we have. 
um, from there, the decisions we make are the decisions we make from a growth perspective. Uh, I just want to correct something here, Dermot. Growth's first relay via the gateway was early 2021 and now process about 400 million relays per day. We were sending relays to the network uh, within the first three months of um, launching it. Um, what Grove did was rebuild the original gateway um, uh, initially. And we did peak at, I believe, over 2 billion uh, requests a day, which is a ton of expense if you're not charging for it. Hopefully we can edit out the gaps in the uh, final recording, but uh, we will obviously continue to keep the session alive as long as there is an active string of questions. So, Rob, it is in the proposal, uh, the, the vesting uh, for the session. This is a concern. We have a bit of back and forth here, but I hope it answer any more questions. We've got till uh, two o'clock, which is about 40 minutes.
Alberto, also curious about this. What are your plans to support existing gateways that are in growth? Uh, what is your growth strategy outside of traveling the world hosting workshops? Uh, I don't have full visibility into the entire plan uh, that the foundation had. I think Dermot mentioned a little bit of it, but my intention is to continue um, what they've been working on. Um, I think they are great ideas um, and make sure that we have folks to help uh, bring on more gateways. There's obviously limits to how many gateways the current version of Pocket can um, uh, can hold, uh, but obviously I think this is already being done in a pretty pretty careful manner. Um, so I would say, to your answer your question, what is your growth strategy outside of traveling the world, hosting workshops, I would say continuing that work stream, uh, which I think is critically important. Um, I will be at other conferences throughout this trip. Obviously, talking to prospective gateway operators is really important at these conferences, uh, but also uh, making sure that we get uh, the rest of the world involved as well. Seems kind of strange. You're not happy with additional directors. You could have easily taken Jack's role and saved all the drama. Um, like I said, it comes from a disagreement of, I think, leadership. Um, and this is from feedback from the community. Um, I think ultimately having, whether it's observers, directors, whatever it might be, uh, will help ease anyone's communities, anyone's concerns from the community. Um, ultimately, you know, I proposed it. Uh, felt like I uh, uh, am capable enough to do it and handle it, given the transparency I'm committing to. Uh, but ultimately, like, you know, as long as I can execute on the things that I think are important, uh, that's all I really care about. When I think about a critical piece of the plan to support other gateways, um, Grove already does that with multiple gateways today. Um, and whether it's building on the gateway kit or building its own version of um, uh, uh, the gateway kit, uh, either is completely fine, uh, but ultimately making it, I think, I think the biggest challenge for onboarding gateways is, is tooling, to be completely honest. Um, it's gotta be as easy as possible for people to be able to spin one up. Um, and frankly, it just takes time uh, right now. Not to discredit anything that Blade has built, uh, because I think it's done an incredible job. Uh, but ultimately, like you know, people need to be able to trust uh, the software and uh, uh, make sure that their business uh, uh, doesn't uh, falter for depending on something like that. And uh, my, my my perspective is that I just think tooling needs to improve and be built on what we already have. Mike, is there a timeline for open sourcing the portal? Uh, no, there isn't, uh, but I'm hoping I can give some uh, in relatively short order. So any of this would be weird saying this, but a member of the community asked me to ask you this. Are you taking meals regularly? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, Shane, a document with your first 90-day strategy around workshop was shared with a number of individuals. Any objections to sharing that for market clarity? Yeah, I've, I've built on that, Shane. Um, it's a version of that that I intend on posting next to the revised proposal. How will you respond if Art and Olshansky build a competing business? Um, 
that's not happening um, to my knowledge. Uh, but uh, I would continue as I would, as I, as I best can. I'm not sure why you're asking that, but uh, yeah, that's not something that's going to happen. Sex and folks are typing, so just waiting for them.
looks like the questions are slowing down. Uh, unless anyone has anything else. I would say look forward to my uh, updated proposal and 90 day plan. Uh, hopefully later this week, if not no later than Monday. Beautiful. Thanks, Michael. And thanks everyone for joining in and uh, running through all the things that were important in this conversation. Uh, next week, hopefully, we'll be back on the normal schedule. And I'm very much looking forward to Ramiro uh, demoing his uh, AI workbench uh, utility that they've created. So looking forward to seeing that same time, same channel next week. And uh, for now, thank you, everyone.